Huh? Huh? Hmm? Huh. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Sticky History. For today's topic, we'll be exploring an influential character in France before the 1789 revolution. In this video, we will be talking about Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was the Austrian-born wife of Louis XVI, who is widely remembered for her lavish lifestyle, which made her rather unpopular with the French Third Estate. Your mind may wander to a certain catchphrase for which she is especially well known for, which is qu'ils mangent de la brioche, or in English, let them eat cake. Please do bear in mind that this is most likely untrue, though it does sum up how out of touch and unpopular she was in France. Marie Antoinette was the daughter of Habsburg Empress Maria Theresa and her husband, the Emperor Francis I. She became entangled with the French monarchy when she was married to her husband, the grandson of Louis XV, at the age of just 14. From here, it was a bit of a slippery slope for Marie. Due to the emotional distance and childishness of the two heirs, Louis and Marie, they were unable to produce a child during the first eight years of their marriage. Louis's brothers saw this as their chance to rule in place of Louis, as without a strong male heir to inherit the throne, power would automatically fall to them. Due to her somewhat extravagant upbringing, something she consequently took into adulthood with her, with her she was hated by much of the population who thought she was wasting valuable resources. It was at this point that France were at war with Britain in America and they had very little left in the savings pot. What's more, a large number of French people were living in poverty at this time and were very suspicious of this new Austrian woman and her questionable spending habits. For example, in 1775, there were a series of riots named the Flower Wars. These were triggered by a rise in grain and bread prices, which were the staple of many people's diets. At the same time, there are records of Marie Antoinette buying dresses, wigs and other luxuries made, as well as excessive gambling. It was not just the spending habits that worked against Marie Antoinette. Being an Austrian with many familial relationships still back at home, the heiress to the French throne often tried to manipulate people in the French court to forge a closer relationship with Austria. This was particularly unpopular as the alliance between Austria and France was not widely supported by a lot of the general population at the time. However, it would be unfair to blame France's debt crisis solely on Marie Antoinette's spending addiction. Their engagement in foreign wars and conflicts, as well as the weakness of character of her husband, both contributed to the dreary state of French finances in the 1770s and 1780s. Having said this, it is still easy to see why she was resented and disliked by a population who had close to nothing. In terms of the relationship shared between Louis and his wife, it was not what you'd call close. The king lacked a strength of character and did not have much time for his wife. This resulted in a number of mistresses and affairs, indicating that there perhaps wasn't too much love involved in the marriage. So much so, that there was a speculation that their children were in fact illegitimate and were not royalty at all. Although these rumours are now widely disbelieved, the evidence at the time was ignored, as people used this information as ammunition to destroy the Queen's credibility and reputation. And it's fair to say that people hopped on the bandwagon. These vicious rumours resulted in an event you may have heard of, and that was the Diamond Necklace Affair in 1785. Essentially, a woman called Comtesse de la Motte was responsible for tricking Cardinal de Rohan into acquiring a necklace under the pretense that it was for the Queen. The necklace was originally commissioned under Louis XV for his favourite mistress, Madame du Barry, Though he died and she was exiled before any payment was received and the necklace was accepted. Comtesse de la Motte made up the story that the Queen desired the necklace, they wanted to get it secretly as to avoid public judgment for yet another extravagant expenditure. 
As the Cardinal was keen to gain royal recognition and favour, he agreed to buy the necklace from the jewellers on behalf of the Queen. And you can probably guess where this is going. The Comtesse took the necklace for her own profit and the Queen knew nothing about it. It was only when the jewellers had missed their payment that the monarchy was alerted to the fraudulent endeavour. Although the story about the Queen was fabricated, people began to despise Marie Antoinette as they thought she had misused public funds for her personal use. Her implication in the scandal can be considered as one of the final nails in her coffin. Though the revolution was in 1789, Marie Antoinette was not executed until four years later in 1793. The renowned wax artist Marie Tussaud made a death mask of Antoinette's face after her execution. Marie Antoinette was a prominent figure during the 1770s and 80s in France, but she developed an unpopular reputation for lavish spending and extravagance. It was due to a number of reasons, though notably the diamond necklace affair, that she was hated by the French public, and we can consider it to contribute to the fall of the French monarchy in 1789. And if you were thought you recognised the name Marie Tussauds, she is responsible for the waxwork places in London. But thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Um, also, leave a comment down below of what you'd like to see in future videos. It helps me out. Thank you.